morning to all. Uh, my colleague uh, Saurabh ji, Shishir ji, Mayang ji, Sajin ji, uh, Bhuvan ji, uh, in fact, sabse lambe time se aap jannye wale, mein aapka naam ek second ke liye. Uh, Amit ji and Shyam Sundar ji and uh, uh, aapka bhi naam mein jhen se utar raha hai, but more up na? Okay, perfect. And uh, students from different colleges, aap kitne jekhoon se aayonge bachche loog? Perfect. So let me conclude uh, all these speakers for wonderful thoughts shared and uh, let me thank you all for being part of this uh, function today. Dunia badi teji se badal lahi hai, isme to koi discussion ke jorot nahi, koi doubt nahi hai. The world is rapidly changing and uh, change is permanent and uh, jitna rapid pace of change hoga utna hi Challenges usi speed se aapke saamne pesh honge. The greater the speed of change, more are the equal, uh, you know, uh, speed of challenges emerging before you. And to deal with the challenges, you need to learn. And learning, uh, not only learning, it has to be applied through collective actions because to find the solutions. Uh, the pace of change is so fast that there was a Maselkar committee report in, I think, 2002 that uh, the learning of human civilization since recorded history of 5,000 years, that much knowledge and learning is happening every next seven years. So which means since the human civilization and the recorded history that we have of over 5,000 years, that much knowledge is getting accumulated every seven years. In fact, if the latest koi study aayegi, it, uh, the period may be reduced to six years, something like that. ये स्टडी तब आई थी जब डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजीज का इतना दौर नहीं था जो अब देखने को मिल रहा है हर चीज में वर्ल्ड इज चेंजिंग एंड सो इज चेंजिंग आवर कंट्री एंड इनफैक्ट आवर कंट्री इज चेंजिंग ऑन ए मच फास्टर स्केल एंड टुडे इट इज द राइज एंड राइज एंड शाइन एंड शाइन फॉर इंडिया इनफैक्ट एवरी ग्लोबल अपॉर्चुनिटी दैट वी सी इज टर्निंग आउट टू द एडवांटेज ऑफ इंडिया विद द increasing global isolation of China or the Ukraine-Russia war or any other uh, uh, you know, crisis that you see, it comes to the advantage of India. In fact, Indian agriculture has also rapidly changed. In fact, today, what we saw is uh, uh, a year before, uh, it's about $480 billion. Now I think we are touching $600 billion in value terms, which means about uh, 40 lakh crores of uh, industry. And this is a sector which is full of uh, gaps and distortions. In fact, uh, as Sachin, I think you were mentioning, every distortion is an opportunity of its own size. Bigger the problem, bigger the opportunity. As simple as that. And in fact, dunya mein shayad koi dousi industry nahi hogi, dousa koi sector nahi hoga, dousi koi industry nahi hoga, aur dunya mein shayad koi dousa mulk bhi nahi hoga, jahaan pe the gap exists uh, to an extent of 400, 500, 600 percent. If year-round average of tomato, the farmer gets average price is 5 rupees, then the consumer pays about 20 rupees. Not that uh, all the money that intermediaries uh, get out of this uh, gap, what producer gets and what the consumer pays, but there are distortions and gaps, uh, what we call post-harvest losses, the handling losses and so on. So this is, uh, in context of Indian agriculture, the maximum opportunities you will see in the post-harvest management, which is post-production uh, gamut of activities. So these are agri-businesses, agri-trade, harvest management itself, logistics, storage, and all the value-added activities, and of course, including trade. So since uh, 1947, and more importantly, 1967, when the Green Revolution began, we were focused on production and we remain because of the deficit naturally we were uh, very production centric mindset and all the courses at agriculture uh, we studied in BSc agriculture they were all uh, you know related to production and maximize production was the only uh, policy thrust and the mantra in agriculture it is only last uh, about 10 years of uh, 15 years uh, we can say that commodity after commodity we either become surplus, uh, self-sufficient or surplus. So today the mindset is shifting and in fact, 
even in agriculture ministry where there are uh, 11 joint secretaries only one deals with the uh, trade part and everyone else deals with the seed pesticide extension fertilizer and you know these kind of things so that change is now happening that the collective thinking is going into how to bridge the gap between consumer and the farmers and that is where a lot of startups are also coming up with the solutions bridging that gap and uh, bringing the two together and to ensure that uh, consumer pays less and the producer gets more today if we uh, look at uh, the five major uh, you know global challenges and on that related opportunities then one that climate uh, change and the challenge it presents and the opportunity also it uh, throws up is huge there is a estimate that probably in uh, next uh, 50 years time it will be 50 trillion dollar uh, uh, business opportunity so many startups will be coming up in uh, the uh, area of uh, capturing the uh, you know uh, reduction in emission and commercializing that through carbon trading trading platforms so this is one area but uh, this is commercial side of it this is actually a very grave challenge before the humanity because the climate change is not in now in uh, textbooks it is for real we can see ourselves you know it's no fall in saudi arab and temperature rising to 42 degree in europe is uh, we can see it and uh, somebody mentioned that bangalore getting flooded so this uh, changes there so this is one that entire agriculture production system will have to get reoriented to deal with the climate so climate adjusted agriculture production system whether we call climate resilient uh, uh, crops and agriculture or climate adjusted more importantly that is one that in your thought process so whichever roles you are into you'll have to keep in mind that climate change is real it is happening it is happening at a very fast pace to ensure food production all the strategy required to ensure that we are able to produce and we are able to get it to the consumers so that's the biggest challenge before us in fact uh, india has come up with a very right kind of uh, uh, policy thrust at a time when it was required uh, to be that uh, on india's persuasion you all know that international year of millets currently we are celebrating and celebrating on a very massive scale worldwide all the embassies have been instructed to celebrate in each country and india also year round celebrations there so millets hold lot of promise to deal with the climate change this is a climate smart uh, food production system it is also health smart it's also nutrition smart because all the beauty of uh, what a smart uh, food should be that is uh, an india advantage has is about 42% of the world's millet uh, production we account for and therefore link global opportunities in terms of trade also second concern area is of course the nutrition which also gets linked with the uh, uh, millet production but uh, nutrition we are under uh, you know acutely undernourished country from 18 to 32% on different parameters in uh, you know being undernourished uh, uh, from uh, stunted uh, growth of ch children to uh, the uh, you know what uh, lactating mothers facing and uh, many problems that we see underweight child and so on so this is uh, second area and third is of course the opportunity for india in context of the trade we are about 8 and 1/2 percent of the world's uh, agriculture in value term but in trade we are just reached 2.3% uh, after crossing 50 billion dollars so for a long time we are about 32 billion dollars but now so last few years have been very very uh, good for india's agriculture exports against 23 billion dollars of imports we are about 51 billion dollars in exports this year we may well touch uh, 60 billion dollars then digitalization people have talked about and this is a great opportunity and very fast pace of happening that also uh, you know uh, from traditional agriculture to modern and to precision agriculture now to digital agriculture we are moving in that direction so this will have to keep uh, you know uh, observe minutely what uh, i think uh, sachin mentioned that uh, wherever there is a uh, less application of uh, digital tools or I, uh, you can look at and come up with the uh, solutions if you are getting into a kind of uh, uh, looking into uh, creating a startup or an opportunity to figure out uh, what uh, application you can make out of that so digitization of different uh, activities in agriculture and digitalizing that to make a business model out of that is something that you should be looking for in the years to come and uh, 
lastly uh, linked to climate change is i would say the sustainable agriculture production system again i am coming back to the first point the world is in fact yesterday only the world sustainable development summit uh, that was hosted by terry itself that dg was here and the world's about 1000 uh, delegates participated it was a huge gathering so irrespective of which sector you are into now the sustainable development is going to be the key for economic development and uh, all the strategies related to that and there is a new uh, model emerging and that will throw up a lot of job opportunities also in the years to come in fact institute can also look at introducing a course of esg so esg i think have not been introduced even at times so, so this uh, can be one uh, course also can be looked at but you all have to uh, do a lot of research and reading if it is not already part of the course curriculum that how the esg is going to govern the uh, the businesses and how the business opportunities are going to come up in the esg segment so these are some of the thought but let me thank again all the speakers for uh, sharing their valuable thoughts and spending time here and thank you saurabh ji for uh, hosting us all and uh, initiating on this important uh, program thank you all thank you